let's listen. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. This is Mike Score. Mike, if you would be so kind, please, as to introduce me to this gentleman, then behind and then over. This is Frank. This is Frank Morsley. Frank, nice to have you with us. Thank you. Welcome, behind us. This is my brother, Ali. Ali, nice to see you again. And over here? This is my close friend, Paul Reynolds. Hello, Paul. Nice to see you. Are they all from the neighborhood? From, uh, I don't know, they said that in England, uh, the neighborhood, what do they call everybody from the same area? I know what we call them, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, don't we call them Scouses. Scouses. No, I heard that when I was in Liverpool. Here um, we are at the Happy Corp Retro Rebellion show, and we are here with the lead singer of Flock of Seagulls, Mike Score. Mike, great to finally, finally get a chance to interview you. I am doing well, thank you, and uh, looking forward to the interview. <laughs> <laughs> great. So... We saw you, last time I saw you was in Anaheim. I think it was in the spring. You started this leg of the tour being supported by the Depeche Mode tribute, uh, Strange Love. And uh, how has that tour been going over the summer here? And how much is left of uh, that leg of the tour? Um, it's been going really well. I mean, it, the, the two acts seem to fit well together. People that come to see us, most of them like Depeche Mode. So for them, it's a good, uh, you know, a good uh, band to watch. Sometimes they come and see you with, a, say, another original band, and they don't like the original band, you know, so then they're waiting. But most people tend to have something they like from Depeche Mode. Um, so it's working out. And um, as far as how long is it going to last, I don't know, because now that it's been on the road for a while, we're getting a lot more requests to, you know, come up to Cleveland and do it, come to New York and do it, you know. So, um, because it's a good show, I think it will probably extend into next summer. We were discussing the kind of music you make. You are into the, uh, the, the parapsychology of the world, UFOs and all of that. Is that the inspiration for the music, really? Basically, yeah. I mean, anything that's not real will inspire us. Or, what, what or was known to be real, you know, it's like you just cannot prove they're real, so that's an inspiration. I have a library, Mike, that i got to get to you people. It's about 18 feet long of all of the unexplained things that ever happened in the world. I mean, next time you're out traveling, you're on a train. No, it's fun stuff. <laughs> Mike, I know that when you formed this band back in 1979, there was kind of a, a real focus by you and the original members where you were all into uh, space alien kind of sci-fi um, you know themes and it really played well with the music at the time and um my question to you is because I, I think of you guys really like a duran duran almost where you had a look you had the hit songs you know you had the videos right in, from the beginning on mtv and so my question to you is was that idea that you came up with you know you're coming out of the 70s you guys were influenced by david bowie's ziggy stardust i read and you're coming out of uh, the 70s into the decade of decadence, and you have this look. Were those things intended by the band, or was that just part of the times and, and going into the early 80s? Um, well, we wanted to be space cadets. You know, we were, we were into uh, sci-fi, outer space. So we were moving in that direction. Some of the songs were very sci-fi sounding, so... Having then looked at, say, Bowie and, you know, like Alice Cooper, for instance, had a horror show, and it was all about, well, you've got you've to treat your music with a look, you know, so that the look is as interesting as the band. And um, when I started doing my hair up and spiking it and doing the wings on it and stuff, I noticed more and more people were looking at it and the, you know, the shows were getting bigger audiences because that was something to focus on um, so I'd say uh, probably about 50% of that was us literally saying what can we do to make this look more sci-fi and you know 50% of it as, as well was let's write some more sci-fi kind of songs you know um, but we did kind of burn out on that after a couple of years especially you know touring certain songs when we thought the newer songs we were writing were better than the older ones um, but people know your older ones so it kind of puts you in a bit of a bind of 
what you should play, you know, on tour, unless you're going to play for four hours. And uh, I don't care who it is, I couldn't stand watching a band for four hours. <laughs> you, know? you know, I was lucky enough to get to uh, talk to you backstage. It was pre-COVID, right before COVID, uh, at one of the Lost 80s Lives, and you and I were talking about you know, at the time I was shooting a pilot that me and my friend are still trying to sell out here in L.A., but uh, you and I were talking about script ideas and things like that. I was just wondering, on you know, when you're traveling or on your free time, do you still think about any of those kind of ideas, or are you writing songs? Uh, wh what do you fill your time with when you do have any time? Um, I'm always trying to write songs. I mean, I don't literally sit down and go, I want to write a song, but songs are always floating from the Akashic record, you know, and I'm just one of those lucky people that can reach out and grab them. Um, there's a lot of musicians that can play great, but they can't write a song. So um, I'm one of those that can write a song, but I'm not that good a player. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it, it's that. I, if I come up for an idea for a video or a movie, I write it down. It gets stuffed in the back of a book somewhere and maybe it'll pop up again in a year or two's time. And I go, that was a great idea. Can't use it now, of course, because at that time it seemed brilliant, but things move on, you know. But I'm always, uh, always thinking, I don't really have another hobby but music. So, so something musical or a video or something like that, a look maybe. Sometimes I, you know, I design clothes and then I go, well, in the 80s, this would have been great, but it's yeah. 50 years ago now or something, you know. So, yeah, you're always thinking about what you're doing. Yeah. I know that from a very young age, you owned your own hair salon and you guys would practice, I think, above it. But uh, tell me about that. You know, you have that skill set, obviously, or you had it. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people who are stylists out there and know that you had that skill set wonder if you ever dive into it and just talk about um, How did how you got into that and and how that brought you into music maybe right? Well, yeah, I I was a young punk hairdresser um, so we did You know, we didn't really do straight styles. We did anything that was crazy and punky and we made things up as we went along so um, girls, boys, anybody that wanted something different would come to us and um, they'd come in they go, I'm going to a punk party or a punk club tonight, make me look like a punk, you know, so we do some crazy stuff with their hair and um, we just got known for that kind of thing so eventually people in bands started coming to us and saying, hey can you make me look a bit more striking a bit more like a rock musician, you know, and uh, and then of course we'd do their hair, and then we'd go and see them, and a lot of the times we'd see these local bands, and we'd go, well, you know what, I think I could do better than that. So that got us into music. When the hairdressing shop wasn't busy, you know, we had a couple of guitars, and we'd sit there and we'd bash things out. And my brother, you know, we had a, a drum kit made out of cardboard boxes and. Stuff like that. We just made stuff up, and uh, you know, we never expected this. We never expected 40 years later to still be playing and and doing, you know, sci-fi inspired uh, new wave of the 2024 period. You know, we just didn't expect it. So, uh, as far as going back to hairdressing, I stood on my feet long enough. <laughs> doing people's hair and um, and I wouldn't even go in and get mine done <laughs> well we love you on Village Radio and we play all your music on the retro stations classic alternative from the 70s and 80s you're an iconic figure on there hopefully you'll get a chance to check it out sometime yeah I probably will you give me your card I'm tuning in <laughs> there you go
Hi, this is Mike Score from A Flock of Seagulls. Thank you for watching Jamie Wheatley's Man on the Street.